Hey, Samhita, can should we start? Oh uh, yes, sir. We can start. Wonderful. A very good evening to everyone present here. I'm Samhita, vice chairperson of TCT ACM CGI student chapter from Sakur College of Engineering and Technology, Mumbai, and I'm going to be your host for today. On behalf of the TCT ACM CGI team, I warmly welcome all the attendees on Zoom and our speaker, Ms. Jimmy to our event, Dive into the AI and Machine Learning Universe. In the words of the famous Daniel Bell, technology, like arts of human imagination. It is difficult to imagine the world today without the internet and cell phones. But this, but this has not always been the case. It has taken us three centuries and four industrial revolutions to reach the world we live in today. Modern technology has become so advanced that it is on the brink of replacing human activities and emotions. One such advanced form of technology is artificial intelligence. As the name of our event suggests, this is the theme that we ask in today's webinar. He is also an author and has three books under his name. Hey, Samhita, you are you are breaking. Yeah. Your your I'm internet is choppy. Am I audible now, sir? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, he is an experienced speaker who has pre previously delivered talks in domains related to AI and machine learning. Other than that, sir loves flying and has a pilot's license. We are very pleased to have you here today, sir. I would now like to hand over the session to you. Thank you so much, Samita. I really appreciate it. And I'm delighted to be here. So this is what you're gonna learn in the next 90 minutes to two hours. I'm gonna talk about how the AI world has evolved and where it is going. Obviously I'll introduce myself as well. And then we are gonna talk about how could you get latest trends in AI? What is going on, right? What are large language models? I can help you guide towards how do you start your AI journey? And then I'll get you free ML course. How can you get access to a free ML course? And we will have time for Q&A. If you, you wanna ask any question, more than happy. I'm not saying I'm the DO expert. I'll try to answer as many as questions as possible. So with that said, let me quickly introduce myself. I am Naresh Jasotani, and uh, I have 18 years of experience. Currently, I am working in Google. I'm the AI ML innovation lead for automotives. I'm based out of Detroit, Michigan, US. As Samita said, I have authored multiple books, and two of my books are Adopting TensorFlow for the Real World AI and Blockchain Beyond Basics. I also, I'm an ex-practice head of a center of excellence for a, for a medium and a large company in my previous experience. And this is my LinkedIn profile. So feel free to join me on LinkedIn as well. All right, so let's get started. But before we start, I will not be doing justice if I do not introduce my other authors. So I have written multiple books with Mr. Ajay Arja, who is on the call today. And he is the CEO of Simplomatica Technologies based in Mumbai, India. I also have Deepraj S. Chauhan. He is the director for AI ML practice. He's a GCP head of Miracle Software Systems based in the US. I know they are muted, but I'll have an opportunity for them to talk and for you to interact with them as well as we go in Q&A. So with that said, let's get started, right? Let's get started on what is this AI ML? Like where did it come from? So let's let's think, right? I mean, it's it's always good to look at where we came from. 
And I'm pretty sure most of you know this because it's the publicly available information, but in 1950, 1960 timeframe, a person named Alan Turing, he introduced a concept of automated machine, you know, automated processing. So it, that is where he was trying to make machines done. But during that time, there were not too many computers around, not too powerful computers around. In fact, the computers were designed and built or in the process of designing and building. But then if you look at it through the journey in decades, we made so little progress. So in 1970s, we have first industrial robot means that when you create or manufacture plants and equipment, you will have you know, automated robots doing a lot of things. You must have seen in the old movies. Around 20 years, there was nothing in AI because everybody was so focused in getting computers working. You know, IBM came up with mainframes. I'm not too sure if you know that because you are just starting your journey. Apple came with its Mac, and Windows from Microsoft was launched and there were so many computer-oriented innovations which led to a very slow movement in AI. But from 1991 to 2000, probably most of the people on the call are born between this range because your students are just you know, making it up from the calculations. 1997, that was the first time a computer defeated a world champion of that time. He used to be a grandmaster, Gary Kasparov. And then that was a start of building robots. When you are playing game on the cell phone, you are playing with an AI, where you are doing a lot of you know, traveling, when you are making use of any electronic device, which is like phone, computers, and TVs and stuff, all machine learning related activities are going somewhere, right? Like happening in the background. But then in the last decade, around 2011 to 2020, there was a very huge push in AI and machine learning, wherein the AI piece, the term AI machine learning became so famous that people used to get jobs like crazy. Even today, I'll talk to you about jobs in a minute. And then obviously chat GPT came around last year, but I'll tell you an interesting fact of chat GPT. The research paper of chat GPT, which is a transformer, and we'll talk about all of this today, came out in 2017 by Google. So we'll talk about all of this today but this was the journey. We came from a very rudimentary element back in 1950. It took 50 years with a lot of people innovating, researching, and finally you are here. So, you know, you should appreciate where it all came from. And this was the, a small evolution of AI itself. And I'm not gonna walk you through all of this, but at the end of the day, what you wanted to see is there was an explosion around 2009, 2010. And then all of these innovations, all of these things were brought into the market so that people can get jobs, people can learn technologies. And today, you even now, as we speak, we are making use of AI with you, right? I'll, get, I'll tell you how. Most of the slides that you are gonna see are talking about how it is created. But the next slide will talk to you about how it is used. So there are two things, right? How it is created, how it is used in a, in a couple of slides. Now, let, let's think about this, right? I'll tell you my journey with AI. I started AI when it was not even called AI or machine learning known as statistics. Many of you might have heard statistical algorithm, statistical programming. Back in the day, I used to 
work for Accenture and I joined or JP Morgan had a, had a project with Accenture. And they asked me to create a, create a program that can predict if a trade, you know, the stock market trade from JP Morgan, that trade is gonna make profit or loss. Think about that, very simple. When a trade is put in, when you buy a stock or sell a stock, that trade itself, that transaction, is that transaction gonna end up making a profit or a loss? And that was a statistical programming. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And you know, I wrote a code and we got it done. That particular incident led me to believe that there is something in the future. And I keep on saying, as I said, I have been doing AI and machine learning since this time it, it was even called machine learning. But 2009, 10, and it all progressed like crazy. So let's get into it. Where are we today? We have these four important areas for you to progress on your career perspective. Cloud services, number one, as I am in Google Cloud. There are a lot of technologies evolving which are requiring people like you, students like you, to learn and progress and get into the workforce. So cloud services, number one. If you pitch any cloud, you know, I'm from Google, so Google Cloud, or Azure from Microsoft, AWS, Alibaba, Oracle Cloud, IBM Cloud. There are so many clouds out there, and there are a lot of jobs on these cloud services. If you know cloud, if you have well understanding, good understanding on the cloud section, you have an opportunity to get a job, or a good opportunity to get a job. Next on the list is data warehouse. So data warehouse, data lake, databases, I'm not gonna go into detail, but those do have a lot of job opportunities like databases, database engineers, SQL engineers, uh, data engineers, uh, ETL, extract transform load, informaticas of the world. So those kind of jobs also exist. But if you look at it, I put machine learning in red because machine learning jobs are such critical jobs that are available in any and every company. Talk about company who is on the cloud GCP, they need machine learning engineers. You, need, you talk about a company who, are, who is in Azure, they need machine learning engineers. Talk about a company who is not on, even on the cloud, they are doing everything on-prem, meaning on their own servers, not on any cloud, they need machine learning. So machine learning jobs, AI jobs, if you learn Python, if you learn TensorFlow, if you run, run, learn how to run a machine learning code, that is going to give you a job in the future. And many of you, there are a lot of, know already that there is a lot of recession, a lot of people losing jobs, at least in the US. I don't know about the India piece yet, but in the US, even though the jobs have been lost in the last three, four months, Facebook, you know, Amazon and others have fired people, even Google too, but then they have still hired machine learning engineers. So that is the place I would highly recommend you to go as well. I'm not saying it, it is good for you or not. I would recommend this is an area you should take a look. And then advanced analytics, you know, there is a very fine line between a machine learning and data science. I'm assuming that most of you know already a little bit of machine learning, but I'm gonna tell you some basics of machine learning and data science in a few minutes. But these are some numbers for you. There are currently in the US and you know, of course over the world as well, I have seen at least 100,000 jobs, one lakh, in from the from the Indian thing, one lakh machine learning open jobs available. But the workforce, think this is this is where the education system comes into play, right? The education system, most of you are engineers. The education system create engineers. They they train engineers. They train students to become engineers. But these engineers may not be ready for the job. These engineers 
may not be consumed directly into the workforce and be effective. You need certifications. There are less than 15% of the workforce is certified. Again, there are too many cloud certifications. So reach out to, as I said, Mr. Ajay Jha and to Mr. Deepraj Chauhan, and you can add them on the LinkedIn as well. They will tell you how important and how could you get towards your certification journey. And then any technology which is futuristic, think about this, chat GPT, right? Google's have their own BARD. We're gonna talk about all of this in a few minutes. Okay, so as I said, where is the opportunity, right? I broke down this list even more. I'll give you five seconds to look at it. Okay, so let's do this. This slide was created, this slide was created before chat GPT came onto the board, okay? So what I want you to do is in your chat, there is one particular opportunity between compute, data lake, storage, uh, networking, all of these, there is one thing which might be impacted or changed based on what you are hearing from chat GPT. There is one thing which needs to be changed. You need to tell me what is that? Any Anything? Give it a shot. Tell me compute, tell me internet of things. One thing on this would change. Put it on the chat, use the chat. Content generation, absolutely, Max. The content generation is going to change the way it is operating because the content is gonna be created by machines now. It is already being created by machines. But apart from that, everything has opportunity in the market today. Machine learning, mobile app development, right? There's so many apps coming out almost every day. Networking, blockchain, right? Great, I think, you know, Mr. Ajay Jha has been nominated. He's a CEO, he has been nominated as the innovative CEO in the world of blockchain and cryptos very recently. So obviously, winners still to be decided but he's already nominated there. So blockchain, compute, data lake, storage, so many opportunities out there. I think if you have an agility to learn, understand the concept and be consistent of what you are trying to learn, I believe that everybody on the call has an opportunity. All right, so let's look at some AI use cases. So many of the CEOs have put a statement, even Samhita you know, started with a statement, I'm gonna do the same thing for AI. AI may not be the driver, but more of an enabler. The most digitized, that means the organization which have gone through a digital transformation. The most digitized organization have also deployed AI in more functions than others. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down for you. And by the way, I did not say it, it was coming from McKenzie and company. What they're saying is one of the methods to be more competitive in this market is by using AI at the forefront. What it means? When you interact with any of the Google services like YouTube, Maps, Gmail, Drive, all of these services inherently, or search, right, the biggest one, you have inherently AI behind those services driving them. I'll give you an example. When you are searching something on YouTube, based on the location, based on your demographics or user types or profiles, it is able to understand what kind of content you should be able to see or you should be being in your page on YouTube or Google search. If I search something here based in the US, it'll be different from the search based in, in, in the places you are. And then it also understands my previous hobbies, search histories, and keeps you a very highly curated content. Many of you might have seen the difference between when you search and Google search, 
versus, you know, I don't want to take a name, but let's say DuckDuckGo or Yahoo Search. There is a difference. Why? Because the AI behind these technologies are different, right? The, the quality of AI models are different. And we'll talk about it in the terms of LLM, large language models very soon. So these are some of the use cases which are dealt with marketing. So for example, if you go to Amazon, amazon.com, flipkart.com, right? In India, when you search for a product, based on if it is Diwali time or Christmas time, New Year end, it's gonna do a price optimization. You might see some things which are cheaper during the holiday season because people have a tendency to buy more versus off season where you do not have those many deals. Sometimes t-shirts are very, you know, cost effective, easy, costly, cheap, cheap, cheaper available, while sometimes it is not. Recommendations engine. So these are some of the cases with finance, fraud detection, credit lending. Manufacturing has different use cases. When you go today in the plan, all the cameras are monitoring the, the assembly line. There are less and less number of people use. Robotic process automation, RPAs, is another technology that is being developed. HR and healthcare. So if you look at it, all segments, all businesses have a need for AI, all right? So let's talk about machine learning. I know that most of you on the call might know machine learning. If not, uh, somebody has pasted it on the in the chat, the link to join a machine learning classroom. So if you click on that link, and I'm gonna talk about it later as well. If you click on this link, you would see that there is a free machine learning course. Anybody who has joined this session, click on the link which is on the screen or in the chat, you would be able to see this free, completely free machine learning course, which is video based. So you go through this and every section, every thing has ML fundamentals, TensorFlow, and then I'm gonna add large language models as well, probably by mid next week. But again, this is one of the course that you're gonna get for free if you have attended this session. And you have to use the email ID, I'll tell you in a few minutes how it is gonna be used. But let's talk about machine learning. Let's take a break, right? Let's talk about machine learning. People who know machine learning, good. You don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna run through these slides quicker, faster, but let's understand machine learning. Machine learning is something known as, is a program which depends on something known as observability the power of observance, the power of correlation, right? What are these? Let's look at a very simple exercise here. If the price is four, then the profit is one. If the price is $16 or 16 rupees, the profit is four rupees, 20 for five and 100 for 25. So how do I calculate profit of 200 price or price is 200? The equation that we all know in our minds that we can create is profit equals to 0.25 into price. Looking at this, right? You have input, which is price, and output, which is profit. In machine learning, the concept is you provide the input and you provide the output and let the machine learning decide, figure out equation. This is what we used to do mathematics, linear regression, right? Uh, linear equation, right? All of these, what we have been doing in math in our schools and college days is kind of driving machine learning algorithm. Now, let's see the basic difference between machine learning and data science, as I told you, very simple. This is area and square feet, number of bedrooms, it is furnished or not, and based on that, the price is decided. It is in dollars, please note that. Now, if I have to create a machine learning algorithm, these three will be my input parameters. That means these are the columns, the features that decide the price of the, of the house. So a machine learning, as I said, you provide the input, you provide the observation, 
and the model is going to calculate the correlation the equation between them based on that you are able to find out what is the price of or an, an approximate price of the 1500 square feet home but make make see this 1500 square feet is not here so what is machine learning what is data science data science is going to extract the insight from the data it's not going to predict machine learning is more for prediction classification unsupervised learning and stuff like that we're going to talk about it but it is predicting a particular thing but in here in data science it will suggest hypotheses like for example uh, you know if you have more bedrooms the price will be more if you have a furnished house the price will be high if the area is more the price will be high these are some of the answers that data science gives you gives you and finally you know some of the things that i have written over there this is the basic difference between a machine learning and a data science now let's quickly move let's i'll show you how llm fits what is machine learning what is data science how they are coming together right many people have got this confused i'm going to give you a little bit of perspective artificial intelligence is that being a big umbrella which has machine learning not all artificial intelligence have machine learning but all of the machine learning is part of artificial intelligence right see the difference when diagram now when you create neural nets i will talk about neural nets in a bit but dnn deep neural nets are those highly specialized algorithms that can solve complex problems example if you are wanting to calculate an area of a rectangle l cross b length into breadth but when you are doing a circle it's a polynomial equation pi r square so area of a rectangle and area of a circle have different equations so machine learning can handle any kind of equations right polynomial whatever but deep neural nets are created specifically where the problem statement is more complicated like visual inspection lane detection autonomous driving tesla car today can do a very high level of high degree of autonomous driving all of those models need obviously much more than deep learning but deep learning neural nets are part of those models that create those models data science obviously it may or may not be artificial intelligence and it may or may not be machine learning and then chat bots rpas robotic process automation virtual assistant robotics robots right are all part of ai may not be machine learning may be machine learning but they are part of artificial intelligence stack now within machine learning you have supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning i'm not going to talk to you in detail for now if you want to learn more reach out or search google or chat gpt right and then you have generative ai cans i'm going to i'm going to let you think a little bit cans is generative artificial neural nets these gave birth to something known as large language models generative ai like chat gpt dal e you know open ai dal e a lot of other services even google part.google.com uh very soon probably in the next 2 to 3 months we would see a plethora of technologies that google will release in the market i'm going to talk about some of them in a few minutes and then you have machine learning frameworks tensorflow mxnet pytorch scikit-learn weka so all of these now keras are part of tensorflow now but these are machine learning frameworks that are being utilized across now this course that i showed it to you is totally based on tensorflow so you would learn other things as well but tensorflow is what drives it so what i'm going to do uh, is i'm going to take four to five questions here 
and uh, please feel free to ask questions now. I can I can take. Okay, there are a couple of questions. So let's take Nitish Yadav, sir. What do you mean by data visualization? Can you explain with an example? Perfect. I will do that. And then somebody TT forty six AI something ML Pratik. What are the components that are required to do data visualization? Very good. Good question. Let me ask. Let, let me answer that. Data, <laughs> data visualization is this. When you have data, which is in forms of rows and tables in your database or in your CSVs, just numbers do not make sense. But when you put perspective to numbers in a visual format, that will make more sense. I'll give you an example. If you follow cricket or any other sport, in cricket, they would show run scored every over and they plot for the team batting first. So if they hit, for example, 300, over number 10 had 60 runs, 20 over 110 runs. So they plot a line. And then against that, in the second innings, they plot another line, saying that how good or the bad the second team is catching up which are chasing the score, right? IPL is going on right now. When you see that visual, you would immediately think, oh my God, you know, the team two is lagging. They need to score more runs. Otherwise, you know, your team or the second team is going to lose. So data visualization needs data to be represented in a visual format that can infer decision. As I mentioned here, Think about that, right? Um, I'm just going to go back to the previous slide. In here, this data, even though it was in a tabular format, it may not have made more sense. But if I give you a bar chart diagram of number of bedrooms and the price, you would impact more. You will have a very good immediate catch because it, with humans, we as humans, we tend to attach to a picture, a visual more than a text or numbers. And therefore, data visualization is that key component that can explain the data or make you understand the data more. And then another question was, what are the components that are required to do data visualization? The components that are required or few components that are required to do data visualizations are, but not limited to, are the data itself, a good understanding, a business understanding of the data. Because if I remove the column names over here, this data doesn't make sense. So you need to understand the business more. And finally, whatever you are trying to explain, you should be able to explain with a visual diagram. And those are the components for data visualization. Technologies include Tableau, Power BI, Looker from Google. There is a free product from Google as well, known as Looker Studio. Also used to known as, be known as Data Studio. There are a lot of visualization tools in the market today. With that said, I don't see any more questions. I am going to move on. All right. So quickly moving on uh, to the other stuff. Okay. Now let's look at machine learning. If you're doing weather forecasting or a click-through rate on a website or sales forecasting or price prediction, what you're essentially doing is predicting a number. Think about that. Weather forecasting, degree Celsius for tomorrow is a number. Sales forecasting, $2.5 million in the next six months is a number. Price prediction. You know what? I think the price of the new iPhone is going to go down because in the last time when iPhone 14 Pro Max was released, 14, 13, <clears throat> iPhone 13 had a price decline. So price prediction. These are numbers. When you are doing price prediction, weather forecasting on numbers, you are essentially doing something known as regression. On the other hand, when you are doing customer churn, 
whether this customer is going to stay with you or not. Diagnostic, do you have coronavirus infection or not? Image classification, you are doing something known as classes. Diagnostic, yes or no? Customer, yes or no? Image classification, is it cat, dog, or somebody, some, some other animal? These both are the branches where you have a target variable. Target meaning you are trying to predict a particular thing. And therefore, it is known as a supervised machine learning. That means a supervised machine learning is that component or a branch of machine learning which deals with a target variable. That means you have data from the past labeled and based on that, you make prediction. There is another branch of machine learning known as unsupervised, which is no target variable defined like clusters. Clusters, group of customer based on something. Association analysis. LLM, right? Recommendation system. Customer segmentation. Market basket analysis. LLMs, right? Chat GPT is an unsupervised learning model. You know, you have DALI, you have images, you have lots of other things. So in the last decade, in my mind, if I have to classify, in the last decade, there was a huge push, even today, right? But from the last decade, supervised learning was the main type of machine learning. In today's world, the things have changed and it is now focused much on unsupervised learning like text creation, generative AI, LLMs, and stuff like that. So with that, I'm going to quickly touch upon this computer vision because that is important for LLM. And I'm going to deep dive on LLM. So how do you do computer vision? For example, I need to create a machine learning model that will identify a defective bottle versus good bottle. If you look at it, the top two images on the screen are good bottles because there is no defect. And the last one is a reject because there's a defect over here. So how do you train it? You say, hey, these are like 800 images of good, 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 good. And these are 800 images of bad, 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 reject, reject, reject and then a machine learning model will train itself, right? And once the machine learning model is trained, you deploy it onto a plant floor or you know, place where you want to, the model to start making inferences. And then think about, think about cost benefit analysis. Think about how do you deploy this AI project? And then also think about what could be the challenges. Forget about all this, but main topic is, how do you train a, an image recognition model? Good, good, good. You train it on good images. Bad, bad, bad. You also train it on bad images. And that's how you train a machine learning model for computer vision. So the previous example was housing. The next example was for vision. Let's talk about large language models. So ignore for now. Uh, this is a very simple flowchart of machine learning. I'm not going to spend my time because if you don't know, you will learn. And I, I, I'm, I think with the, in the interest of time, we should move forward. But when you're designing machine learning model, the first step is to get data, then split the data. You need to split the data in two sections or three, depending upon what you're trying to do. But in a general case, two, train and test, train data, if the data has a target, that means if you have a target variable. If you do not have a target variable, it is unsupervised. LLM, we are going to discuss LLM. If you have a target variable, it is, con is it continuous or discrete? That means a number or a class. And then based on that, you define you want to do classification or regression model. And then train your model, test your model with your test data and evaluate your model, and then deploy your model. So these are some of the steps. There could be a lot many, feature engineering, data preparation, you know, cross-validation. There could be a few steps, but this is overall, how do you build a model flowchart? So with that said, uh, deep neural nets, you know, it creates a network of pairs for neurons. Now, you need to understand this. Feed forward neural net means it goes from output 
to hidden layers, sorry, input to hidden layers to output. It goes only in one direction. But neural net back propagation, that means it goes from input to the hidden layer to the output. It calculates the loss function. That means the loss. And then goes back and adjusts all the weights. If people who are very familiar with deep neural nets, for them. For now, if you do not know deep neural nets, don't worry. When you go through the course, you will learn how to or what is deep neural net. But the back propagation of neural net was one of the most important methods or technologies that gave birth to LLMs. I just wanted to show you this AI architecture. For now, we are, we are going to skip it, but I'm going to share the slides with the management team, Masamita, Kash, Rishi, and everybody else, and they are going to let you or have you look at it. But for now, this is the a large, like very high level view of how AI can be done. So let's talk about the main topic, large language model. So we discussed about traditional machine learning model, supervised machine learning, where you have housing, prices, number of rooms, you do your models. Then you have image recognition, good or bad images. Hey, good, 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 bad, 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 remember? But what if I say to a machine learning model, hey, go read books. Let's take a moment to understand. Go read books. Don't come to me for training. I do not have labeled data. I do not have images. Go read books. Go to GitHub, read code. Go read. Think about your exams, right? You have a chapter one, you read your chapter, then you have questions associated with that chapter. Chapter two, book one, subject one, you have books that you read for six months if you're in engineering in India for semester, and then you have an exam based on what you read. No supervised learning. And then you write your exam. That is generative model. A machine learning model that can read large stack text of data, large corpus. Corpus means training data. A machine learning model that can read large corpus of data and be able to answer questions back to you is a large language model. It, it has a lot other meaning, but this is a very simple form. So examples are forecast sales, that is your traditional machine learning. Quality inspection, good or bad bottle. And here, hey, answer my random question. That's what you're doing today on chat GPT. And wait till the end of the session, or when we are about to end of the session, I'm gonna give you a demo where you are going to use a hugging face birth model or a Google transformer model to be able to create a very small chat GPT for yourself, your chat GPT, All right? So hold on till the end of the session. Again, answer my random question, right? So I have read all the books. I have read Wikipedia. Imagine, let's, let's get visual here. I go to a movie, I watch the movie. Before I go to the movie, I do not know who is the killer. Obviously, you haven't seen the movie, right? But when you have seen the movie, now you know who is the killer because you have learned it. So videos, images are also coming apart from text. And that is why you must be saying open DAL E, D-A-L-L-E, which can create images based on text. Things are changing. The way we operate are changing. It's changing, right? So let's let's look at some more detail. I'm gonna give you 10, 15 seconds to read this and we will explain it in a minute.
All right, let's look at it. So, generative model. A generative model is a model that can create content for you, like images, like text. I want to write a blog. I want to create an image. I want to create a video. That is your generative model. What is a large language model? A large language model is an AI model that is trained on huge data sets like GitHub, Wikipedia, books, PDFs. And then it helps generative model to create content. And Transformer is the research paper that Google wrote back in 2017. So Google Research, DeepMind, wrote a paper which is available on archive as well, which tells you what is Transformer. And that Transformer, that research, I'm not saying, please understand, I'm a Googler. So I want to be really careful what I say. Transformer research back in 2017 was used by OpenAI as the base to build ChatGPT. Google did not build ChatGPT, please understand that. But the paper that was published form one of the several bases that OpenAI used for ChatGPT. Now, Google has its own internal ChatGPT or it's available as well. I think I have access here in the US known as bard.google.com. And this is the chat GPT version of Google. I don't think so you have access in India, but few people like, you know, Ajay Arjha, who is the CEO of Simplomatic, he got access obviously because he's a Google partner. His company is a Google partner as well. But I know in the US it's open, in India it may not be available right now. But again, bard.google.com is your Google's bar. Okay, so let's look at large language model. These are some of the models which are out there and I'm gonna explain you all of these, how they are created, what are those in a second. But let's look at it. Chat GPT, right? Meta, Facebook, right? They are also coming up with their own model. And these numbers are features, data points. I'll talk to you in a minute. But large language models, as I already said, they have exploded. And that is gonna change the way we think, see things today. Let's that, spend 10 seconds over here. See what are these big you know, uh, circles and there are models written inside it. For example, this is what I want you to do. Palm, Palm is the model that is Google's Bard. So the BARD, which I showed you here, is using Palm, which is which was released like three, four weeks ago. Obviously, being Googlers, I had access to Palm for almost six months, but to the general public, it was released three weeks ago. And this is ChatGPT3. Look at this, right? ChatGPT3 had 175 billion data points that it was trained on versus Palm, which was 540 billion data points. And this is from NVIDIA. I have a whole paper that the director of Miracle Software Systems, Deepraj S. Chauhan has written. And uh, I can share that with you, with the group. And he has published a blog, I'll not say blog, but a research on what different clouds are doing. So with that said, I'll give you 15 seconds to look at these circles. I know it doesn't make any sense, but these are some of the models that are available out there with their data points. And I'll come back to you in 15 seconds.
Okay. So with that said, let's take a five minute break, Samhita, and then we come back. Uh, we come back in five minutes. It is eight thirty here, so six p.m. in India. We'll come back at six o five. Take a break. Six o five. Let's take a break. So it, when we come back in five minutes, we'll do hands-on and uh, you know, we will have also have access to the classroom. So again, five minutes break.
All right, everyone. So let's get back. Um, I'll give you 30 more seconds and then we'll get started here. All right, let's get started. So these are large language models, sizes, right? And unnecessary to say, but the larger the model, the more data it is trained on, the more wide it can go, and the more effective that will be. Now, think on that. Let's, let's take, a, take a break. There is something known as prompt engineering. Prompt, P-R-O-M-P-T, prompt engineering. In the last few months, based on the evolution of chat GPT, BARD, and other things, prompt engineering has become one of the most sought after, uh, after job in the US market at least. It can obviously you know, turn the wave to other countries as well. But what are these prompt engineering? And I, I think I mentioned that when you have a large language model like Palm or Chat GPT-3 or Lambda, Lambda is again a Google model here. Yalom, this is NVIDIA. When you have a model here, you have large data. Imagine in a contextual world, you are going into a library, your college library. Your college library might have thousands of books. Now, assuming one fine day, you have read all the books in the library. How will I ask you questions? You know all, everything in the library. 1,000 books, you have read it. Now I come back to you and I say, who is Mahatma Gandhi? You know, our father of nation, nation in the, from, for, for India, Indian father of nation. How are you gonna search for the text which says who is Mahatma Gandhi? Let's do a little brainstorming, right? So you walk down the aisle in, your library, look for non-fiction section, assuming you have a great library, right? So you have non-fiction section. In the non-fiction section, you want to look at history. And within the history section, you're gonna look at <clears throat> mythology, not mythology, sorry, uh, Indian history or biography. And in the biography, there would be, or autography, there would be one book for, you know, father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. And in that book on page number X, let's say 20, you read that who is Mahatma Gandhi. He was born as Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and, and things like that. Imagine you standing at the door of library or the reception of library. And for you to reach that statement in the book, on the page number 20th, line number five, paragraph number two, how did you reach there? The ability to decipher, the ability to reach to the content that you need from this thousand books is prompt engineering. Let's take an example from a chat GPT world. In chat GPT, if you say, give me a code, it'll be like, oh my gosh, which code? But when you say that, hey, now you act as a Python developer for me and give me a code that can write a machine learning program to predict weather for tomorrow. In that way, you would see it spit, it would spit out Python code. 
that the the tech the art so prompt engineering is more of an art the art of driving a machine learning model or a large language model to a level where it can understand where to look the information from you need to go to non fiction historical biographies and to a book page number 20 in order to traverse that is known as prompt engineering how well you can ask question of the model for the model to be able to traverse to reach to the information that you are looking for is prompt engineering so let's talk about a little technical we are all technical people on the call as i mentioned the way llms are working they are called as unsupervised learning that means you are reading a book the model is reading a book you do not have any labeled or supervised machine learning model the how it is done as i mentioned google published the transformer block back in 2017 so you have input you embed your input and then create a layer of transformer these are deep neural nets torch is one of the machine learning framework pytorch which is used you could have tensor flow neural net to drive these transformers and people who are familiar with deep neural net softmax is the output layer the layer which provides an output is known as softmax so in your large language model the way you are going to code is through layers of transformation deep neural nets followed by softmax this drives a lot of models like chat gpt every in fact every model out there chat gpt 3 4 and a palm nlp for from nvidia and things like that bert bert was is one such model that was published back in 2018 obviously by google because you know this is what we were talking about and bert had lot of different kinds of model that can provide responses let's talk about it so let's take a step back right we as users of the application we may not necessarily have those resources to build a library let's think about one more time what i said was because we are not google not nvidia not open ai we cannot build that corpus the training data for a model as big as palm or chat gpt3 or whatever for training we cannot do that just because we do not have resources we are not rich enough we do not have money we do not have power compute power so what companies like google did is they said hey i will train a big model and you train a smaller model think on that i'll repeat i will have the big library but then you can borrow few books and then you read from that book at your home you don't have to necessarily sit in the in the library let's think it over one more time i have the huge corpus large model and i can lend you an api a connection that can be utilized for you to train your stuff you do it that is what i will show you using bird i'll show you an example a demo where you create your own large language model using bird or i'll not say create a large language model you use the large language model to do a question answer for your data in a few minutes so let's see first of all 
how to join the training, right? What is in the training? I'll introduce you to something known as CoLab. And in the next 15 minutes, we are going to you know, cover the section. And then we will open up for Q&A because I see you might have lots of questions. I'm happy to answer all of your questions or most of your questions that I could possibly, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so let's get to the, to the stuff. This is the link which was, which gives you the access. It's a free course. I'll show you how to, how to go to this course, all right? And Rishi or somebody from the management team, could you put the link in the chat one more time, please? So if you go here, there would be a link that they have put on the in the chat, I believe. Yes, thank you, Rishi. So once you put this in the thing, you would be thrown something like this. And enter your Gmail ID and say join class. And it's a free thing, right? You don't need any access, nothing. You should be logged with your, your Gmail account. Go to classwork and you would see every single thing. Okay, now you would see the quiz. I mean, take the quiz and then the certifications will be provided by Simplomatic India or the, AI, the, the organizing committee. So Rishi, you probably can work with uh, Samita, Miss Samita, and uh, you know, figure out who can provide the... Oh, so sorry, I, I thought you're not able to see this screen. Okay, let me... Um, you're not able to see the screen. Okay, my bad. Uh, so when you go to this link and you will be thrown a thing, say join class. And in the classwork, you would see all of these training. You will have quiz for week one. And again, Rishi and Ms. Samita and others, please figure out who is going to provide the certification. If you have trouble, Simplomatic India has offered to provide certification if you do not want to provide any certification for this course. And then in the people, you would see that almost 90 to 100 people are already in. And this is all free, right? This is all TensorFlow video-based code. And as I said, by next week, we are gonna add LLM in this. So it'll help you prepare for interviews as well, Python coding interview, data science interview, data engineering interviews as well for you to you know, learn and grow, get a job, right? Like get onto the working um, thing. As I said, it's a four week course, video based course, and it's LLM focused. As I'm gonna, as I said, once you learn through the basic, we'll, we'll add LLM details as well as week five. So collab. most of the course goes through a collab. I'll tell you what is a collab. A collab is a notebook. Now, if you have not heard notebook, it is, simply a document, you know, a document kind of a thing, wherein you can write code and text together, like a markdown. So I'll show you Colab. You go here and search for colab.research.google.com. If, if you're logged in with your Gmail account, you would click on new notebook and you would be served a notebook screen like this. In the runtime, in the runtime, you would see that you would have access to CPUs and TPUs. What are TPUs? TPUs are tensor processing unit that can help improve the training time of your machine learning algorithm. It could be LLM, it could be regular, you know, regressions, classification, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and stuff like that. All right. So 
This is something that I use all the time. This is something that I would highly recommend you to use. You don't have to install anything. Uh, if you have a notebook like this, you can start writing, right? Import NumPy as NMNP if you are familiar with Python, okay? Next, you can use to learn Python or you know sometimes Unix as well. And this is how you get access to Colab. So you can create your code or write your code in the Colab and run it on GCP directly, obviously with service accounts and some authorizations. But all you will do here, you can run it on GCP as, as well. And you know, if you need any direction guidance, please reach out to Mr. Deepraj Chauhan. He is the director of Miracle Software System. I introduced Deepraj Chauhan with Mr. Ajay Jha earlier in the session. So again, this is the capability. You are going to use a cloud version of Colab. You can use GPUs, CPUs, to train your model. It's all free, no charge there. And it's not me, it's obviously by Google. Now let's look at the demo. Let's make some fun, right? So let's, let's create a demo. Okay, I'm gonna build this demo for you and I'm gonna share the code as well. Now let me take a movie. Okay, I the first movie, Indian movie. I'm just gonna make it fun, right? So you have an Indian movie known as Badla. You know, I'm not too sure if you've seen it. I love the movie. So let's say Badla movie. It's a movie, pick any movie. It doesn't have to be your movie, right? And if I picked it, there's a Wikipedia link. It gives you all the details. What I'm gonna do is, I'm assuming, that the model that is trained, the big model that is trained already has this read as well, because this is part of library, right? This is part of Wikipedia. So I'm assuming that the model already have read this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to copy the entire plot or write a web scrapper in Python if you are very highly technical to read the plot from this Wikipedia. Just copy the text. And then I'm gonna build a question answering system, a question answering mechanism for creating or answering on this particular text, right? I don't wanna watch a movie. I'll just do question answer, correct? All right. So I went in here and I have written this code. I'm not gonna explain you this code because this is a little too much. And this is probably out of scope of what we wanted to do. So I'm not going to write the code in front of you, but let's make it understand by the time it's running, I'm using transformers and I'm gonna use two libraries, auto tokenizer and auto model for question answering. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you detailed video, step-by-step -step instruction for you to be able to understand this code. So you don't have to understand it now. As I said, in the classroom, I will create the video, add it over here as week fifth by next week. And then we should be able to run this code, all right? Don't worry. So what I did, I went to Badla Wikipedia, copied the plot, created this model. The model has is using BERT and it is the auto tokenizer and auto model for question answering. Now what Google did is they said, hey, I have different types of models created. And this is one type of a model that I'm gonna use for question answering. It is BERT, large uncased whole word masking fine tuned square. Don't worry about it. Even though I, I don't understand what it is, but I know how to use it, all right? So forget about this code. You don't have to worry about this code. The data you copied, put it in a data.txt file. That's it, just copy paste. And then 
let's ask questions. I'm not too sure if you have watched the video or, or movie, but there is a person known as Nana Seti, I guess played by Tapsi Pannu. So let's run, who is Nana Seti? It's gonna take a little bit of time, but now this particular bard or bird is gonna be trained on the data from Badla movie. And it is gonna answer me, oh, a young, shrewd, successful woman in London with a perfect family. Let's look at it. Look at that. Anna Seti is a young, shrewd, successful businesswoman. So it's, it knows, it can text, right? Let me, let me give you another example. Uh, there we, I, I don't know again, we are seeing the movie or not, but who are Sunny's parents? So it's gonna read the text, understand what I'm asking and give me answers. Right? So Rani and Nirmal, of course, from the movie, are parents, Sunny's parents. And last but not the least, who killed Arjun? Right? The climax of the movie. Who killed Arjun? I have not seen the movie. I'm asking this question to this model. Who killed Arjun? Nana said he killed Arjun. Right? And let's do one more, right? Um, with whom did Nana have an affair? And you would see that in front of you, I copied pasted a model uh, data and created a model that can quickly turn into a Q&A. Imagine I can put it in front of a chatbot and now the chatbot can answer questions for a movie. That is the power of large language model. With that said, uh, I want to open this session for Q&A and I believe Samita or Rishi want to have questions on the chat and I can take one by one. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for delivering that insightful session. Uh, as you mentioned, I can now move on to the question and answer session. So the chat box is now open for any questions. Yeah, I see. So how do you want me to do, Rishi or Samita? Do you want me to just uh, read the question and answer or is it okay? Uh, yes, sir. If there are any personal questions which have come to you, you can uh, like read okay. it out oh. and answer. Okay. And if there are Perfect. any we have, we can also ask if you don't mind. Okay. Perfect. I'll do that. So let me start. Uh, Data visualization was done. Okay, so somebody said, it's like reinforcement learning, I guess. Go read books. No, so reinforcement learning is different. Reinforcement learning is one of the components that drive go read books, right? So what is reinforcement learning? Reinforcement learning is, imagine you have a child at home who could crawl and the child, keeps on crawling and to, at a time, it, he or she hits a wall. The child hits a wall. That means he or she is blocked. The child is blocked. Now the child knows, oh my gosh, I cannot go beyond this because it seems it's an obstacle. I'm gonna take a right turn. The child takes a right turn and hits another wall because this is the other side of the wall, right? The wall is like this. Oh, I hurt, I hit another wall. It's an obstacle again. So it makes another right turn. And now it has a distance to cover. What I'm trying to say by reinforcement learning is that there is no target variable. There is no data for the target variable. But the machine learning is making a mistake. The brain of the child can be thought of as a machine learning program. It is making a mistake of making that right turn when it hit the wall. The next time, probably this child is gonna make the mistake again. But on the third time, most likely the child knows that there is a wall. It will make a left turn instead of a right turn. That is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning helps in LLM by go reading books. It's, I said, for example, chat GPT, right? So you say, hey, chat GPT, give me, you know, who is the president of India? And the president of India 
the chat gpt says narendra modi oops it's not right so you say hey this is not correct the president of india is muru ma'am muru right umuru sorry so if you if you really look at it reinforcement learning is a self learning from the model after it sees the output in the case of chat gpt when you ask the question it responds incorrect and when you say hey it's not right then chat gpt oh okay this is not correct that is reinforcement learning hugging face transformer is really useful so pratik good one hugging face transformer is really useful but i'll tell you another interesting thing and this is where mr deepraj ja uh, sorry mr deepraj tohan has uh, done a white paper a research paper wherein aws on their cloud have adopted hugging face transformer for their cloud use so aws does not have its own large large language model initiative they are using hugging face azure microsoft azure on the other hand have invested in open ai so they are using open ai chat gpt for their llm while in google google has built we have built our own models for llms which is known as generative ai i cannot disclose more but very soon you will hear that in the market that people are talking about gen ai generative ai from google all right which which machine learning algorithms are used by autonomous vehicle very good question for autonomous vehicle and i have trained i don't want to name the client but i have worked with a team in a client i am based out of detroit in a for a client who have trained autonomous model for car driving they are using pytorch and tensorflow combination to train this huge model on gpus and tpus read read about tpus tensor processing unit and gpus graphical process graphics processing unit it would be great if we can get the ppt yes you will get the session ppt i'll share it with the hosting team and they will make a ppt or make a pdf and share it with all of you you can join the class okay reacted okay i'm just looking so to please put in your questions can we use llms like normal people do that take large computational resources can we use llms yes like normal people do that take large computational resources yes llms are created and are built to take or use large computational resources because you have large data how to start with llm what is the essential computation power needed tanishka said you may not be able to build the llm right but you could use the large language models from google to build a smaller llm for you as as we did right with bert we built a model here with bert tokenizer and again as i said i'm going to release a video in the classroom that will explain you what you can do with this model all right so i'm going to make it more clear anisha sik uh, stay tuned which machine learning algorithm used by autonomous vehicles great question they use something known as bevworth you want to see that model i can show it to you right now uh, give me one second here this is the model that they use do not i mean you can go ahead and uh, bev first get up there you go so this is the machine learning autonomous model that they use bev first this is used for uh, autonomous driving this is one of the models all right so i'm going to put it on the chat because people are really interested here okay that is the this is the model this is one of the multiple models that they are using okay wonderful let's let's move on 
Okay. Another question. Can you guide to ML developers in how to build ML portfolio for jobs or internships? Very good question, Pratik. This is what I would recommend. As you go through this training course, the models that you built or you build or you have already built, put it on Git and use the Git link in your resume. Put your Git on your LinkedIn. So think about this, right? I'm not too sure if any of you have or are from that era. I'm pretty sure few of the people who have joined could be from that era. We used to print our resume in a paper format and go and drop it at all the companies back in 2004, five time. Then came a time of emails, right? We had Nokia.com, we still have Nokia.com, I believe, but we had Nokia.com, we used to email, you know, resumes to the email addresses that were provided. But today's world, even though you email or submit or apply to forms, they look at LinkedIn, they look at GitHub, they look at a lot of social media side for understanding which, where you are. So join groups on Facebook, join groups on LinkedIn, you know, um, GitHub, there are a lot of things. Uh, GitHub Copilot is also one of the new features from LLM, you know, publish articles around it, that will be really good. And also, uh, please feel free to join us uh, Ajay Arjha, he's the CEO of Simplomatica. Deepraj, he's the director for GCP practice at Miracle Software Systems. And obviously me, join, it, join us on LinkedIn. Can we in future predict the stock market using API Shrikan? Uh, see, one thing which nobody can predict is the human nature the sentiment that human would interact. Whatever AI you build, whatever something you build, you cannot predict how human as homo sapiens, as a community, human beings, we would react. So using technicals and, you know, I have, I have created with Mr. Ajay Jha some of the applications that can predict stock price movements based on technical indicators. But it's not about stock, right? It's about how human see the value in the stock. And that will be difficult to predict. But again, to a level, it can be predicted with technical analysis. Sir, ML with cyber security related jobs. So as the technology is progressing, and you know, I would say, and many people would not could not comprehend, but back in back in 2000 or 1999, 2000, Ajay, Mr. Ajay Jha, as he's, he's, he's one of my, he is my best friend ever, right? Uh, he used to hack websites as if you are, you know, checking your emails. You know, he will, he will hack websites in like less than five minutes during 1999-2000. But then people have made those channels, the hacking channels, even more concrete. Those were all manual back in the day. But today, because the hacking is so sophisticated, you need ML, machine learning and AI to figure out what is fraud, what is unauthenticated access, or what is hacking, and AI and ML is making great inroads in that space. So yes, there are a lot of ML use cases for cybersecurity. Are there any LLMs or GANs? Also, how does Google incorporate those in applications worth asking for a research project? Okay, so, so GANs in itself is a way of generative adversaries network, or you know, I don't remember the full form probably right now. LLMs are such new and they're evolving 
that they cannot do many things. For example, you must have heard about Shapely. Shapely is a Python library that can help you understand which features impact the machine learning algorithm or the outputs. Explainable AI with Shapely feature attribution, it cannot be done in LLMs today. So LLM is an embryonic stage, very early stage. And LLMs are in infancy and they are still to mature. So I do not think we have GANs for LLMs. Google incorporates or has incorporated LLMs in its cloud. Now I'm gonna go a little bit in Google. So in Google, there is something known as Vertex AI. So if you look at it, in Google, there is something known as Vertex AI, which is the one-stop shop for all your AI needs. Going forward, you would see that like you have tools, data, model development, deploy and use, there will be one more section known as generative AI, where you can use LLM from there. It's coming, I've seen that obviously, but it's coming for regular public use. Which machine algorithm gives you more accurate results in case of weather pulse? It all depends, right? It all depends on what kind of data you have, what kind of feature you have. You can write a simple linear regression, or as complicated as deep neural net. As you know, AI is taking over right now. It's affecting jobs at huge level. People are losing jobs. How does aspiring software enthusiasts deal with it? Very good question, Harsh. Great question, buddy. Harsh X3, great question, all right? So see, first of all, AI is not going to take any job. AI is going to reform or redefine jobs. Think about that. Back in the day, and I'm, I'm not saying as if I'm, we are old, but the technology has progressed so much. Think about that. Most likely you probably won't know. There used to be cell phones with 128 MB, not RAMs. 128 MB of storage. I'm not kidding. I have used cell phones with 128 MB of storage. Technologies progressed back in 2006. For the first time, we were able to sell, send color pictures via SMS to our friend. I'm not talking about even you know, WhatsApp, right? Videos. A color picture, a colored picture of Sai Baba or some, you know, something. We were able to send, send across and we were so happy. When we were able to take pictures of cell phone, which is which were like grainy images, we were really happy. But then there used to be a cell phone company. Obviously, you know about it, but most of you may not. Nokia. That was like the Apple iPhone of that time. If you have a Nokia phone, you are like awesome. But today, where is Nokia? Because the way mobile industry, cell phone industry evolved, Nokia were not able to keep up, keep up to it. They were out of the business. On the other hand, I am the first, no, I am the user of the first iPhone, the iPhone 1. I bought it on the fourth day back in 2007 when it was launched. From that day onwards, I have seen the progression of iPhone as it has happened for the last 15, 16 years. Because they were able to keep up, they were able to maintain their you know, pole position. Even though AI is changing the way we do, do things, but still you need humans to do things. And those who cannot evolve with technology are going to be dropped off. I hope, Harsh, I answered your question. Uh, P65 AI ML something. The question is, 
what are the various LLM models available by Google? Uh, I think I had it on one of the slides. Um, I can go back really quick. Okay, where it is? Yeah, there you go. So you have Palm from Google, uh, GPT-3, not GPT-3, Lambda from Google, uh, Yalom, I guess is Google. And, you know, yeah, I mean, these are the like big models from Google that I can, I can recognize. All right, so I guess I answered that question. What if we ask the opinion about some character in movie of the chat GPT? Yeah, try that. Uh, IT Siddhi, try that, that'll be good. Redmi Note 8, sir, in future, can we manage crowd at railway station or in trains or airports? It'll allow only limited passengers in it. So, so think about the feasibility, right? So if I tell you that you cannot go out of the house because your friend is out of the house, will you like it? Think about that. You cannot go out of the house because your brother is not in the house. Do you like it? So your thought is very good. That means you want to control how many people are at a spot, which is very good. But you cannot control who could be on that spot, right? Number one. And number two is, let's talk about the AI piece to it. The AI piece is that how many people are in a spot? Yes, that is possible, but I don't think so you can minimize or control the, the number of people. Okay. Yeah, GitHub link is posted there. What is the difference between computer vision techniques, machine learning? For example, in machine learning, we can extract features by using CNN. We can also extract images by ORBS script algorithm. So, Computer vision techniques are part of most likely deep neural nets, which is CNN, right? Convoluted neural nets. So machine learning is the broader, if you remember the Venn diagram that I showed you at the start of the session, just gonna quickly go there. Sorry about the animation, sometimes it's good, but when you go reverse, it'll be all crazy, right? So there you go. So if you look at it, you are talking about here. So there is no difference, but machine learning is the big umbrella. You have deep neural nets, and underneath deep neural nets, you have these CNNs and others. Another question, how do you create AI using machine learning? How can you create AI using machine learning, Manikanda? Go through this, I guess, the, the course, you will, okay, let me let me show what I am seeing. Uh, let me show this screen to you. Okay. So I hope you are able to see the message. Uh, somebody, if you can say yes or no, Ajay, if you can say on this WhatsApp, uh, you are able to see the question, right? How Google works to restrict how Google works to restrict defects content in the web, web search. What type of algorithm is being used due to generative AI defects? Yeah, defects have impacted the way we do things. There are specific algorithms, there are specific models that can track whether an image or a video itself is morphed or not. You see, in, in defects, you can still imagine or understand that it may not be real. In some videos, they are really real, right? So it's difficult, but there are research and things going on in that direction. How to make a pet house using AI and machine learning? Uh, Redmi Note, I do not know what is pet house. So I I don't know what, what pet house is. Pratik Shetty, what is AI is an auto ML tool to create? No, not really. Vertex AI is that big umbrella and AutoML is one of the technologies within Vertex AI. Will these AI technologies affect web development jobs? Yes, Harsh, these technologies will affect all kinds of jobs that you are seeing here in some way or the other. So the good thing for you is go read, go study. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, it's very inspiring session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any more questions? I'll hand it over to Samita, Ms. Samita and Rishi. Go ahead, please. Okay, I have one more. How to utilize TF Lite model in an Android application? Can we use Google Cloud? Actually, I'm down errors in TPUs. Okay, so first of all, TPUs and GPUs may not be, it's not a good idea to use TPU and GPUs for TF Lite. TensorFlow Lite is that library from TensorFlow, which is designed to run on edge devices. And those edge devices could be your phone, it could be anything else. TF Lite, I would not recommend you to use TPUs and GPUs because you cannot have TPUs, GPUs on your edge devices. So that is Shiv Shagar Mishra. Okay, perfect. Over to you, Samita and Rishi. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much. For the session, it was really insightful. So, um, yeah, I think since we are done with the questions, we can end. Perfect. So, thank you so much. And I think uh, there is one more question Can you guide how to make pet house for birds and dogs? Oh, the house with AI. No idea. You can use 3D printing, but that's pretty much it. I, uh, I, I don't know how to make a pet house, to be honest. So with that said, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yash, Samita, Rishi, for organizing this. And it was really, really delightful uh, to have you all attending this session and knowing what's out there. So thank you again. And again, please connect Ajay Jha, Deepra Chauhan, and I on LinkedIn if, if you would like. Thank you so much. So this marks the end of our session. First and foremost, on behalf of all the coordinators and students, I would like to thank our esteemed speaker, Mr. Naresh Jostani, for sparing his expertise with us. I would also like to thank Mr. Ajay Jha and Mr. Deepraj Chauhan for providing us with very information, informative resources that will be of great assistance to everyone pursuing AI and ML. I would also like to thank the management for their valuable support in organizing such programs, which boosts the learning of others. I feel a deep sense of honor and privilege to thank our principal, Dr. B.K. Mishra, sir, Vice Principal, Dr. Kamacha, ma'am, for encouraging and helping us make this program happen successfully. I'm very thankful to all deans, senior leaderships, HODs, deputy HODs, activity heads, faculty members, and non-teaching staff for their valuable support and suggestion. I would like to appreciate the student coordinators, technical team, and the coordinators for their own efforts in conducting the event. We are fortunate to be assisted by our in-charge head of department, AI and ML, uh, Dr. Mekharani Patil, ma'am, and Mrs. Rupinder Kaur, faculty in charge of AI and ML department. They've been a constant support and have given us a lot of encouragement. Thank you. And last but not the least, I would like to thank our registered participants who have joined us from all over India, without whom initiating this program would not have been successful. Uh, the link for feedback will be shared on the group. Everyone is requested to fill the same. I would once again, this is the ending of the session. Thank you, sir, very much for having taken your time out and joined us and delivered the session. And with that, today's session comes to an end. Signing off as your host, this is Samkhita. Thank you. <laughs>